no Commodore 64 expert, but did the game Hardball play take me out to the ball game when there's already one out in the third inning of the game? This seems like a boot up sound, or the beginning of each inning at the most. The Chicago Bears. Wait, how is he playing that from his bed? There might be a wire coming off the side of the bed, but was the Commodore 64 joystick cord that long? I don't have the energy to Google it myself, and this movie is basically perfect, so I'm gonna go ahead and take the win here. I brought you a special present. This is obviously a Christmas present. Plus, with the context clues of the decorated houses and the snow outside, this nightmare Santa, and the colored bulbs on this hall bush, I think we have enough to start a public debate as to whether or not The Princess Bride is actually a Christmas movie. I find this to be a supremely valuable use of our pop culture energy. And this is coming from someone who searches for meaningless errors in near-perfect movies for a living. When I was your age, television was called books. And we had to make up our own games like chew the bark off trees. Doesn't sound too bad. I'll try and stay awake. I appreciate a loving grandpa that wants to read stories to his grandson, but where are the parents here? No parent ever checks in on these proceedings after mom brings grandpa into the room. What if grandpa was a lonely horn dog and brought Fifty Shades of Grey with him to read to the kid? The Prince's Bride. Roll credits. Buttercup was raised on a small farm in the country of Florin. Read duration? Ne'er bookshin? Ne'er read bookation? Farm boy, polish my horse's saddle. I want to see my face shining in it by morning. I mean, Buttercup was really kind of a dick, right? Ordering around servants is the exact kind of behavior that Disney movies use to create villains. Buttercup is basically the wicked stepmother, only if she looked like Robin Wright, so I guess that makes it okay. Also, Wesley and Buttercup's love has always happened too fast for my taste. If love happened this fast, then I would have fallen in love with Jenny M, who in ninth grade accidentally grazed the tip of my dick through my pants with her wrist as she moved to tickle me on my lower stomach. But instead, I just laughed at the tickling. And two years later, she was pregnant with Kevin R's baby, and honestly, I dodged a bullet. She's an Ohio State. Fan. When's it get good? Wonder years would be excellent at literature sins. Hear this now. I will always come for you. But how can you be sure? I read the screenplay. The only joy she found was in a daily ride. Alright. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait. He meant horsey ride. Then there will be no one to hear you scream. Except she's on a horse and is one giddy up away from just riding away and leaving you in the dust. So why give away your evil plot before she's in hand? What a very movie thing to do. For a fairy tale lake, this body of water sure looks like an American river. Do you want me to send you back to where you were? Unemployed in Greenland? Greenland is actually a beautiful fing country. I'd probably trade employment in the Florence slums for unemployment in Greenland, yeah. No more rhymes now, I mean it! Anybody want a peanut? Damn it, I've seen this a million times and these lines still make me smile. This movie's an absolute treasure. That take us in all for all the pleasure. Can you sail a boat this size with three people? Who cares? The real question is, can you sail a wind-powered boat with five open flame candles on deck that never go out? No. They always grow louder when they're about to feed on human flesh. You know, like how most predators make more and more noise as they are getting ready to attack for maximum stealth. I'm explaining to you because you look nervous. I'll tell you what I'm nervous about. That open bag of Cheetos. Them turn to bricks within minutes of exposure to air. <laughs> The movie super yada yada is all of that sh Like how Fezzik was able to bend so far over the edge of the boat, how close the boat was even to her, and lifting her from the water into the boat. <laughs> Did the kidnapper's boat just float away on its own? I realize they didn't tie it down, but how is it completely invisible in this shot? Tom Cruise isn't even in this movie, but he still insisted on doing this stunt himself. Well, good thing he brought the big knife. Like, he has a strong man and a guy with a sword, but he still spends forever carving this rope with a letter opener like it's an overdone steak. Inconceivable! You keep using the horn. I don't think it means what you think it means. Except it does? Vizzini uses it anytime he finds something unbelievable, which is exactly what it means. I know we all love this quote and all, but Inigo is the one who is in the wrong here. It's the only way I could be satisfied if I use my right over too quickly. I know exactly how you feel. I played with my sword so much in middle school, I had to do the same thing. People in masks cannot be trusted. Except for doctors, nurses, scientists, chemists, industrial cleaning specialists, Batman, anyone with common sense that is trying to live through a pandemic, and Lone Rangers. You could make an argument that by being so accommodating and letting his opponent rest after the climb, Inigo cost himself the victory here. That's it. That's the sin. His need for fairness nearly gets him killed. He turns over his boot and solid rocks fall out. Several of them. Maybe rocks fall off a cliff when you climb it, but then why leave your boots wide open like this? Six finger man returned and demanded it, but at one tenth his promised price. My father refused. Without a word, the six fingered man slashed him through the heart. But left the sword? You're using Bonetti's defense against me, huh? 
I thought it fitting, considering the rocky terrain. Sword talkers. Both of these guys are like that guy at Poker Night that can't help but explain his GTO raise sizing and fold equity. Just shut up and play the game, Aaron. MIB throws his sword in the first batch of grass, but in the wide shot, it's in the second. Then he flips and lands a few feet to the left of his sword, but somehow it's directly by his hand. Of the many reasons to love this movie, I'm guessing the shot continuity isn't one. Also, he gains nothing from doing a 360 on this bar before jumping off, but does it anyway. Eh, 8.2. Ah yes, the wave your sword quickly above the head method of knocking someone out. Classic. You mean, you'll put down your rock and I'll put down my sword and we'll try and kill each other like civilized people? This kind of talk is considered foreplay in my house. I don't even exercise. Being a dickhead. Rest well, and dream of large women. Just because dude is large doesn't mean his taste in women is large. Maybe he likes skinny girls. Maybe he's gay. Maybe he likes previously fit but now kind of doughy types. Maybe he f goats. There are three apples on the table, and they are never referenced. And I can only assume they're here for each of the three characters. Dinner with Andre here is an asshole for holding the princess hostage. Roberts is an asshole for not just telling the princess who he is. And Buttercup is an asshole for agreeing to marry Humperdinck. Where is the poison? The battle of wits has begun. I always wondered why Buttercup couldn't recognize the voice of her true love. And Australia is entirely peopled with criminals. But Australia wasn't used as a penal colony until the late 18th century. And yes, I know this is all in a fantasy book and not the real Middle Ages, but they're the ones that brought the real history of the real country into it. <laughs> penal colony. Who are you? He sounds like Wesley. He looks like Wesley in a black mask and scarf. I mean, who could he be? The next time my hand flies on its own, for where I come from, there are penalties when a woman lies. Like, hitting them? I thought I was rooting for this crazy couple. I really did, but <laughs> these rough edges are hard to ignore. And then he spoke of a girl of surpassing beauty and faithfulness. I can only assume he meant you. You were presumed dead! Seriously, this whole Mr. Meanie Pants routine makes no sense to me. You loved her, you found her, she's already said she loved you, but thinks you're dead. Why would you still be berating her? That's not love, that's jealousy, and it's damn ugly. As you wish! Oh, my sweet Wesley. Look, let's be honest, the steepness and length of this hill tumble guarantees these two would break dozens of bones. But nope, they get up after and walk away just fine. And that's worth at least three cents. Also, I understand using a stunt double, maybe even a male stunt double, but maybe shave the mustache? I know this was never meant to be freeze-framed, and you might not think it's fair, but who says life is fair? Where is that written? Sins aren't always fair. Told you I would always come for you. And then threaten to hit you and verbally berate you. What is it? What's the matter? What's the matter is when did you guys have time for a PB&J break? And why is the closet behind you suddenly open? Who was in the closet with the PB&J? <laughs> was that fire even close enough to her to catch her dress on fire? Can we show the slow-mo, please? No, no, it was not. My name is Ryan. I inherited the ship from the previous Dreadfire Roberts. Just as you will inherit it from me. The legend is revealed to be a fake. It's like the Wizard of Oz meets Barry Bonds. So we sailed ashore, took on an entirely new crew, and he stayed aboard for a while as first mate. All the time calling me Roberts. It's a fun plan until you realize you have to replace your entire crew every time you hand off the franchise. That's a lot of wasted resources on training and a lot of opportunity for distrust and incompetence. Not exactly the whiz-bang service worthy of the DPR brand. The lightning sand? But you were clever enough to discover what that looks like, so in the future we can avoid that too. You knew there was something called lightning sand and you didn't have a conversation about looking out for obvious sandy areas. What about the RUSs? Rodents of unusual size? I don't think they exist. He keeps lying to her. He just saw some of the RUSs, and he can't guarantee they won't show up again, so lying to her helps no one. For instance, he could have said, look, if they're real, here's how we could defeat them. A fire spout right where you rolled over with the RUS in the exact right position to fry it, but not you? Is it just me, or did they completely luck themselves out of the evil forest? He just acted like it wasn't any big deal, and yeah, they defeated all three fire swamp foes, but it was a lot of f***ing luck, man. Luck bombs going off all over the place. Also, I guess after you kill one RUS, the others just leave you alone? More like rodents of unusual timidity, am I right? How in the ever-loving hell did Humperdink and crew catch them? Is there, like, only one exit for the entire fire swamp? How are Humperdink and crew waiting right where Wesley and Buttercup come out like it's the goddamn Lincoln Tunnel? If we surrender, and I return with you, will you promise not to hurt this man? The single biggest sin in this entire movie is the fact that Buttercup actually trusts and believes Humperdink here regarding how Wesley will be treated. <laughs> Humperdink is a little bitch, and he is not strong enough to one-arm her up onto the horse. <laughs> I'm telling you, you're messing up the story. Now get it right. Star Wars fans. Boo! 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 It was all a dream cliche. I'll send my four fastest ships, one in each direction. Right, because there are only four directions. We're sure to find him as long as he's located on the equator or prime meridian. This is a dumb plan, even if it was being honest. Once Gilder is blamed, the nation will be truly outraged. They'll demand we go to war. Warmongering. Suction cups. How do they work? Instead of sucking water, 
I'm sucking life. And that's all the explanation we're going to get about that. Day of the wedding arrived. Is constant narrating worse or better than regular narration? Does it matter that the amazing Peter Falk is doing it? Should we care if we've already seen the narration or not? The answers to all these questions and more are at the sound of the ding. These prisoners in the carriage have no cuffs on. Why don't any of them just climb out and jump to freedom? Let's go. Where? To find the men in black, obviously. Well, you don't know where he is. Fezzik would be excellent at CinemaSense. Where every ship in my armada waits to accompany us on our honeymoon. This line here is so that Buttercup can catch him in the lie about having sent the four fastest ships to find Wesley. But my question is, why would you want an entire navy on your honeymoon? Have you seen how sailors behave when they go ashore? Honeymoon is you time. <clears throat> your Majesty. Considering Chumperdink is still a prince, he would be your highness, and not your majesty, or at the very least, Miss Jackson, if you're nasty. You never sent the ships. No, he didn't, but the sin is still on you for continuing to take him at his word. Not to 50! What? Were you thinking more like 11? No matter the pain, the human voice has volume constraints, and there's no way everyone would hear this scream. His true love is marrying another tonight, so who else has the cause for ultimate suffering? Since when did Indigo know that the man in black was after his true love? You've touched swords with a guy a few times, and you think you know everything about him. Also, maybe it's someone you don't know and have never heard of whose father was recently slaughtered. Perhaps during the purge of the thieves' forest. Yes, he's right, but he shouldn't be, is my point. It's funny, sure, but the characters in this movie are luckier than the X-Force's domino. Grandpa, Grandpa, wait, wait. Last time you did this, Columbo said, All right then, no more interruptions. So this is either a sin on your disobedience or his lack of follow-through. Either way, I'm very disappointed. Who kills Prince Humperdinck? At the end, somebody's got to do it. Wow, savage. He distinctly said to blave. Liar! Just going to remove two sins right here for Billy Crystal and Carol Kane for nearly stealing an already excellent movie. Chocolate coating makes it go down easier. It's the size of a big toe? Couldn't you have made two smaller pills? None of the Legion of Guards at the gate see these obvious idiots attempting to sneak across the bridge. Who are you? Are we enemies? Did I miss the part where selective amnesia is part of the side effects of the miracle pill? Why wouldn't Wesley know who Inigo is, considering they had quite a moment together? There were gymnastics and everything. Let me explain. No, there is too much. Let me sum up. Sitting fast and furious movies. The cut from this shot to this close-up is jarring. In the former, his head is leaning all the way over to the left side on his shoulder. But in the close-up, the head is clearly straight up and not tilting to either shoulder. How did you get that? At Miracle Max's. If it's so nice, I could keep it. So what the movie is saying is not only that there was enough downtime while Max was making the miracle pill for Andre to find a cloak, try it on, and then converse with Max about it, but that it happened in that small hut without Inigo even knowing? You're stretching the reality pretty thin here in this fantasy story, guys. Now they are openly standing and not even trying to hide on the bridge, with 60 gate guards half a football field away that apparently cannot see them. Also, weekend at Wesley's. Marriage. Making fun of speech impediments. So pleasure, your wife. Skip. Hey, that's my line. I'll be honest, the climax of this movie has a lot of Tom and Jerry in it. Hello. My name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. Fezzik can't find Wesley where he left him, which means Wesley not only walked off on his own, but th he also knew which bedroom was Buttercups, since that is where we see him next. Also, it means that after not finding Wesley, Fezzik was somehow smart enough to figure Wesley would be fine, and that Fezzik himself should go find horses. Look, I've been patient with the overcandling in this movie because Middle Ages, blah blah blah, but they are running through an abandoned storage room full of baskets of hay, and there are two unmanned lit torches sitting on tripods in the middle of the room. <laughs> Why? Will no one think of the apples? There's a shortage of perfect breasts in this world. It would be a pity to damage yours. Love this scene, but what if she's decided to stab herself in a different room? He can't walk right now, so she'd die and he'd live and it'd be Romeo and Juliet kind of thing, which is boring. I was there. This old man said man and wife. Did you say I do? Technicalities. Perhaps I have the strength after all. Well, how did you get away from the hallway into this room and up onto the bed if you don't have the strength, huh? And then there were four white horses. And I thought, there are four of us. Great, but how the f*** did you then find the one spot inside the castle walls where your friends would be jumping out a window? The end. Where are the parents? Even if you had your dad over to read to your son, you can check on them at least once during two hours, right? Run to a crisp or bloody as hell. Bloody as hell. Quiz! Did you know that CinemaSins has two more channels? Music video sins and TV sins. If you, for whatever reason, like our snarky style, you'll probably enjoy even more ridiculous bullshit over there. Okay, that's it for now. Back to the outtakes. I'm explaining to you because you look nervous. But when I say the one, a little old mare will die.
Well, then everyone loses their minds. She makes me feel kind of funny. Like when we used to climb the rope in gym class. Dry land is not a myth! But the boulder problem has a 10-foot section that's incredibly difficult. It's a very intricate sequence. Who are you? I'm Batman. Excuse me. Could you just pour me a full glass? I'll pay for it, okay? I did not hit her. I did not. When you were sinking in the sand, you said, I never told you. I'll tell you later. Are you saying boo or boo-urns? Then why is there fear behind your eyes? Do you know bees and dogs can smell fear? Since the invention of the kiss, there have been five kisses that were rated the most passionate, the most pure. This one left them all behind.